Hello and welcome to Antique.com. Today I'm finally going to get around to looking at this AT Tower unit that I obtained a few months back from a friend who was doing a loft clearance. All I know about this is that when I switch it on it makes a lot of noise. So obviously there's a bit of work to do so I'm going to need to look inside straight away. Ah, right, okay, so there seems to be a number of uh, loose parts inside. What have we got here? There's an old modem, we won't be wanting that. There's a sound card, we'll probably use that, but um, we've got a bit of rust on the outside, so it potentially has been in a fairly damp environment. So we've got no hard drive and the CD-ROM is not connected up. So what have we got? We've got a graphics card, we've got a processor and fan, and we have got a little bit of memory. So um, why it's making that noise, I'll probably have to uh, do a little bit more research. Okay, so um, I've done a little bit of playing around. Um, originally when I switched it on, it was one continuous tone. Uh, which, uh, according to the uh, award BIOS, uh, suggested it was a, mum, uh, uh, a motherboard or a memory issue. Uh, I took the memory out and reseated it, uh, tried it again, and this time I got one long tone followed by three short tones, which is video gra uh, card, uh, potentially faulty or not seated properly. So I tried reseating the card several times and uh, nothing changed. So I've taken this 16 meg Pine card out of it. Um, it's a pretty awful card. Pine was a, a particularly cheap brand and make. Um, they potentially must have had some overheating issues because there's a, a heat sink on the back here. And also uh, particularly interesting, interesting from my point of view, um, a super glued on piece of um, uh, ISA stroke PCI slot, um, um, oh, I don't even know what you call them actually, blanks, that's the word I'm looking for. So the blanks that you'd normally have in here that fill up the holes when there's no card in, uh, they've actually used part of one, cut it off and super glued it on and I can only imagine to try and use this as some form of heat sink. Um, anyway, so this is out. Um, luckily, I've got a, a traditional... Um, a smaller PCI card, it's only like a 2 or a 4 meg job um, but it's as solid as rock and it works so uh, I'm at the point now that when I switch it on boom, we've now got it booting so what is it? it's an AMD K62300 with 128 meg of RAM um, this is a, a transition or a crossover motherboard from when 90% of people had an AT case uh, going to an ATX uh, case. This, this, so this motherboard covers both in that it has the AT power supply and an ATX power supply plug for the motherboard. So it could run either AT or ATX. Secondly, um, it has two ISA and three PCI cards but it also has an AGP, which is particularly unusual on an AT motherboard. And the third um, interesting uh, feature of the motherboard is the, is the RAM. At the moment it's got two uh, 64 meg um, SD RAM, which is unusual to find on one of these motherboards, but it also has 72 pin. So I would imagine this motherboard was one where if you had a, a 486 on early Pentium and you wanted to upgrade just the motherboard and processor and a bit of RAM, you could use this motherboard inside your existing case with your existing cards, with your AT keyboard and your PS2 or serial mouse, um, and carry on as you were without having to uh, recase everything and buy new graphics cards, etc. It opened 
um, you up to bit by bit upgrades such as changing a PCI card for an AGP card, getting rid of your 72 uh, pin memory and moving up to ST RAM. Um, uh, it, it's, it's a crossover motherboard, I didn't really expect to see this in here. So. Um, I'm going to, as I normally do, take this to pieces and give it a damn good clean because um, it, it, it's got some horrible uh, junk and dust on it and on the back of the case, round here, where the uh, cards and uh, everything plug in, there's a little bit of rust which I think has just come... Um, from a little bit of dampness in the loft where it has been stored. And lastly, we've got a little bit of yellowing stroke retro, bite in, uh, retro bright potential here, but also these uh, paint marks, which are, are hopefully I'll get off with the magic sponge. Okay, so we're all back together now, all, all stripped down, all cleaned and all put back together. Um, a bit like the other machine I had, which had some yellowing. I've not retro brighted this, I've just cleaned this uh, magic sponge to get these sort of black paint marks off. Um, otherwise, it's all back together. Um, I've added uh, a hard drive and a different sound card. The original sound card. Uh, I had no idea what the make was, it could have been anything, it probably has some proprietary drivers, it would take me forever to download, so I just happened to have a sound blaster live, which I know Windows finds straight away, so I've put that in. Um, wired everything up, and uh, uh, we're all ready to go. Okay, welcome back. So, machine's all been stripped down, cleaned and rebuilt. Uh, I've added dif a different sound card that's more compatible with Windows. I'm not saying the other one wasn't, but I didn't have the drivers for it. This is a Sound Blaster Live, I will have drivers for it. Um, I've elected to use uh, the uh, other graphics card, the one that I tried earlier and worked. Um, and I've added a hard drive. I got a funny feeling this hard drive's too big for the BIOS of this machine. Uh, we'll, we'll just play around and see what happens with it. Um, and I've also changed the CPU fan for a slightly quieter one. Otherwise, it's uh, as it was. So let's go into the BIOS and set this up. So I'll worry about the date later. Well, let's, uh, let's just go for it and see what we get. Okay, it's found the hard drive, but it hasn't found the CD-ROM. And there's good reason it hasn't found the CD-ROM, I haven't plugged the IDE cable in. So I'll switch it off and I'll try again. Okay, cable's back in, so let's try again. Yee. Right, so found the hard drive, found the CD-ROM drive. Obviously lots of errors, uh, things like, you know, what is the default boot, uh, what type of hard drive it is, what the date is, etc. But for now, I'm quite happy that the hardware is being detected, it's being seen. So uh, what I'll do is I'll set all the CMOS up uh, and I will um, have a play around with the partition of this um, using a slightly different boot disk so I can make life a little bit easier for myself. And uh, I'll see you on the flip side. Okay, so uh, the machine is all back together now. Um, 
I had a few problems and uh, they were all of my own making. It, it's been a while uh, um, since I've played with uh, machines of, of this age. Uh, I used to do it for a living so uh, I'm, I'm a bit embarrassed that I didn't remember it. Um, it turns out that all the BIOS issues I was having with this where it would freeze up detecting the hard drive or it wouldn't reboot or it, it would just lock up uh, for, for no apparent reason were all down to the size of the hard drive. Um, I, I have a selection of hard drives uh, and one of my default go-to ones is um, a 340 gig unit. Uh, I, I managed to pick up uh, half a dozen of these for a couple of pound a piece. So uh, they've all been checked out, they all work fine. So they're good for just putting into a system and loading an operating system on just so that I can, you know, prove that everything's working. Uh, unfortunately, that hard drive uh, was too big for the BIOS of this machine. And uh, I know there's a 128 gig limit on, on more modern machines, um, but what I've forgotten to remember was that this machine has problems seeing anything, or should I say not this machine, but this BIOS has problems seeing anything over sort of like uh, 8 to 10 gig. So, um, I've pulled the 340 out and I've managed to uh, find a 27 gig. Um, I'd put that in thinking that I was below the 128 gig limit, uh, which obviously it is, um, and it was still having the same problems. Um, and I don't know why, but um, just a spark uh, popped up in my brain and um, I, I found a, a, a much smaller hard drive, put that into the machine, and bang, works instantly, straight away. Uh, able to set the BIOS up, able to reboot, reset the date, set the cylinder, head sizes of hard drives, auto detect CD-ROMs, everything no problem whatsoever. So, um, yeah, my bad. Uh, I should have remembered that, uh, uh, depending on the age of the machine, there's obviously a hard drive size limit, and it's not operating system dependent, it's, it's actually a hardware limit. So, um, I've, I've put a this hard drive in and it's uh, it's not particularly large it's it's only 420 meg but um i seem to have this uh, weird selection of terabyte 340 gig this 127 gig or a couple of hard drives that are 400 meg and i don't have anything in between this is windows 95 first edition on floppy disk i thought why not as i got such a paltry small hard drive Let's put such a um, a terrible way to install an operating system. So that's what I'm going to do.
final disc.